Okay guys, welcome back. This is a survival game I'm playing called Adrift. So, in this survival game, have a quick look around, see what's going on over here. You'll notice that I've got air supply and some health here. The air supply seems to be going down slowly, so I'm going to go and see what this is over here. Ah, good. My air supply is back up again. Let's have a little look around, shall we? What's this on the floor? Oh, something just happened. Maybe if I go and check my inventory. Oh, I've picked up three of something. I'll keep that up on the screen for a second. Is there any more of that stuff, I wonder? What's this? This looks like a lift of some sort. Turn that off. And that looks like some more metal behind it. Hmm, check my inventory, and I've got six of something. Switch that off again. Okay, let's have a little look around. I seem to be trapped in this space station. My health's on 50%. Something bad must have happened. Oh, okay. Oh, let's fix my health. What's that? Some kind of handle for something? Pick that up. Oh, that's gone into my inventory as well. There's a tool over there. All right, what's going on? What's this? I don't know, maybe something that I could fit that handle onto, though. And then over here, crafting station. Okay, let's go up to it, and I want to make my metal... Ooh, what was that? I've crafted my metal into something power-based, a power cell. Ooh, master alarm, what's going on, what's going on? Ooh, that's open to space. Oh, the air, the air, oh. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to leave that game there, skip out of it. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about two of the hallmarks of survival games. I'll just frame in on my player over here. Two of the hallmarks of survival games, an inventory system and a crafting system. And I'm going to go through both in this game. So first of all, let's take a look at the inventory system. I'll just collapse this back down again. You can see what I'm talking about. So I've got a first person controller and I've made sure that they're tagged player because my scripts later on, they start off untagged. My scripts later on are going to need them to be tagged player. Uh, this has got a first person ca character on it, which is the camera. And then on that, I've stuck this handy dandy little hand light at the front, that thing you saw me waving around, which has a point light attached to it here so that when I wave it around, the light moves with it. Now underneath, I've got two different canvases. Oops. I've got two different canvases. I've got what I'm calling a critical economies canvas and an inventory canvas. So I could roll all of this stuff together, but if you're watching this game and want to build your own system, it can be quite useful to see it put together in a modular way so you can decide which bits you want and which bits you don't want. So if I expand the critical economies canvas, you'll see I've got the air slider and I've got the health slider. And those two things here, are what control my air supply and my health in the bottom corners of my screen. So using sliders to represent things like health or mana or air supply can be incredibly useful, but I'm not gonna go through that in this tutorial. I'll do a separate tutorial all about how to do that. This tutorial is gonna take a look at the inventory system. And again, because I wanna keep things modular, if I just collapse all this stuff down, You'll see what I've done is I've got nine different sections that correspond to the nine different sections of the inventory system. You can see there, those three have got numbers in them. There's a zero just there in black. The reason for that is because the icon is in white. So the inventory canvas is managed by this scripting system. And I'm gonna get into that in just a second and explain what this script does. But before then, I wanna talk about those nine different slots that we saw. So each of those slots is a different image. So I've gone to the first person character and I've right click UI canvas to create the canvas, to create this inventory canvas, and I've renamed it inventory. And then I've gone right click to add an image. And each one of these is an image. These ones are unnamed so you can see what they're like. And these ones have been named because I've done things to them. Each image has then got a text added onto it by going right click UI text. So we've got a canvas with an image and a text. Now if we take a look at one of the ones I've been using, you'll see there are actually two images. 
One is the empty icon and one is the full icon. So the empty icon is what shows up at the start. It's just the box. It's just the, the blue line box. And the full image in this instance is a piece of metal. Take a look at the other full images here. That's the power symbol and that's the tools symbol. So what I've done with those is I've created this folder called sprites and I've simply dragged the image in and then I've made sure that the texture type is sprite 2D and UI, not default. Each of these is now a sprite, which means when I create an image, a base blank image over here in the canvas, it wants me to drag a source image to it. This is a sprite and you can see in the case of these, I've just dragged the empty inventory image to it. I could drag the tool sprite over and because it's a sprite, it will go in that box over there. So if we focus just on the three that I've used here, I've got one image holding the empty sprite, and I've got a separate image holding the full sprite. And then this parent image here also has a script on it just to hold these two images. So what's gonna happen is the main canvas script, the main inventory canvas script is gonna tell this script, is gonna tell the render metal script here, which of these two images to render. So let's take a look at how it does that. So the first thing to point out in this script is the Unity Engine.UI. Because we're using the user interface, the canvas, the image, the text, we're gonna need this UI here. What I've then got is I've got a few variables. So the first thing I've got is this private inventory here for the canvas. This is something I'm gonna use, as you can see here, to switch on and off. At the start of the game, the inventory is gonna get component for canvas, and it's gonna be switched off. It's not gonna be on the screen at the start. Inventory enabled equals false. I've then got this public text slot, and if I just click back on the canvas, you can see down here I've created an array. So these two square brackets create an array. I can type any number I like in here. If I type in three, for example, it will drop down to three. If I type in nine, it will expand back up to nine. I can have as many of these as I like. And what I've done for each one of these is I've dragged in the text that corresponds to that number. So you can see image three here that's text three. Text number three is the fourth one down because we start from zero. So I've dragged text three into element three. I've dragged text four into element four. And in this case, for the metal image empty, this is zero. I've dragged this text into the zero box here. I've then got three economies. So you'll see in my inventory, I've got nine slots. I've only created the scripts for three, but if you wanted to add more, there would need to be public and static so that other scripts can access them and tell them to go up and down, up as you gather and down as you use them, as you craft with them. Uh, I've then created integers. These are just simply numbers. I need to know how many metal economies I have, how many power cells, how many tool cells, and their whole numbers, so I've used integers. Those are all the variables that I need for this inventory system. If we go down and take a look at void start, you can see, as I said at the start of the game, it's gonna go and get that canvas. So in this case, it's the same canvas that this script is on. It's gonna make sure that it's not switched on at the start of the game. And I'm gonna make sure to set the metal, power cell, and tool economies to zero, which means if I restart the game, they start off as zero. They don't remember whatever I had before. That's the start of the game. If we now look down to void update, quite simply, void update's doing two things. The main thing it's doing is if I hit the key, escape, if I hit the escape key on the keyboard, then it will toggle the inventory enable. So if the inventory was enabled, it will switch it off. And if it wasn't enabled, it will switch it on. It will just toggle it on, off, on, off as I hit the escape key. So I can bring up that inventory and see what I've got. The final thing that update will do is run this check inventory function that I've created down here. This is the final bit of the inventory system. So you'll notice I've put these handy dandy hashed out sections here just to say what each bit does. If you wanted to add more economies, then you would simply copy and paste this stuff here and you'd update the numbers and you'd update whatever the variable for the economy is. If I wanted to add an air economy, then I'd put it probably in slot text three and I'd say air icon, air icon and render full tools has item would be the script that's on the object. I'll get to that in a second. So I'm just gonna take a look at metal here. It's the same for power, it's the same for tool and anything else that you create. And each object type that you can pick up has its own script on it with its own little Boolean telling you whether or not you have the item. And that's because this second line here says that if the player's metal economy is ever greater than or equal to one, i.e. if I have some metal, then it should switch the boolean in the render full metal has item to true. It means tell this script that I've got it. This first bit here tells the script which slot to put the number in. 
So if we take a look at the inventory system, you'll notice there are nine slots and each one has its own number in. If I go and collect this metal, it will only put the three in this slot here. It won't put it in this one and this one. I just want to get into how I've created these slots. So when I create my canvas and I've created my images and text, it's important to know where they're going to go. So you'll notice if you select the parent image, one of the things that you can do if you click on this here is you can set which part of the screen it's going to go to. So you'll notice this first one is going in the top left. The second one, power, is in the top centre. This one is in the top right and that's why I've got nine. So the next one is in there, the next one goes there, the next one goes there. And as long as you set this up, you shouldn't need to change any of the numbers here. It will automatically do that for you. And everything that is a child of this object will sit in the same place. So that's gonna sit in the same place as that image, which is why it loads in the same slot, in the right slot. And the text that I've made size 25 and center aligned will sit in the center of wherever that image is, which will sit in the center of wherever that image is and what controls where that image sits is this box right here. So it all lines up. So if we go and take a look in my inventory scripts, render full metal here, if I load this up, this script basically tells my main script, my, my canvas script, whether or not I have any of this item. I have a public static bool, it's public and static, so it can be accessed by another script. And that simply tells me whether or not I have this item, in this case, metal. It tells me what the, what the empty image is and what the full image is. This script goes on this image under the canvas here. And you'll see it gives me the empty and full. And it's just telling me what image do I load when it's empty and what image do I load when it's full. And those images have come from my sprites here. And I've loaded those onto the actual image itself. Inventory empty and inventory full. So the script for this is pretty straightforward. If the boolean has item is set to false, as it is at the start of the game, then the empty image is enabled and the full image is not. That's true, that's false. However, if I have the item, then the full image is enabled and the empty image is disabled. It will just switch them around as and when I have it so I can see what's going in those slots on my inventory. Okay, so one of the final things worth going through is what actually makes this metal get picked up and added to the inventory system in the first place. So you can see I've got the metal pick up here, which is just the three sheets of cubes and a point light on it. And then on the metal pickup, I've got a collect metal script. And one of the variables in that is a sound effect it's gonna play when I pick it up. So because it's got a sound effect, it needs an audio source, which definitely does not need to loop. I'll just take that off there. This is gonna be controlled by the script. So let's take a quick look at that script now, which is the collect metal script. So there's only two variables to worry about in this script. One is the audio source that's on it. This one's called audio source one because I've got another script with audio source on it and the audio clip, it's gonna play picked up metal from the audio source and the audio source is this one here that's got the script and the audio source on it. At the start of the game, it's gonna activate, it's gonna go find the uh, audio source component. And then down here, I'm using an IE numerator. The reason for that is because I want to wait for a certain number of seconds. So I'm using an IE numerator instead of void and then on trigger enter, collider other, just like any other pickup. If the other game objects tag is exactly equal to player, then it will do all of this stuff. So what's this stuff? Well, the first thing it will do is it will shoot that metal 20 meters straight through the floor. The reason for this is because I want it to play the audio before I destroy the game object. If I ask it to play the audio and destroy the game object at the same time without waiting, then it simply won't play the audio because the audio will try to play at the same instant that the game object is destroyed. So it shoots it through the floor, it plays the audio, and then it accesses the inventory system script and adds three to the metal economy. And if you remember, when you add three to the metal economy, if that ever goes equal to or above one, then render full metal item has item equals true. What it does is it swaps the icon in here as we've previously seen. Then it asks it to wait for two seconds. Why two seconds? Because that is the length of the audio clip. 
it then mutes the audio source so if it hasn't quite finished if there's a fraction of a second left it mutes it and then it destroys the game object why bother destroying it well so it doesn't clutter up the game and use up runtime i've shot it 20 meters through the floor so i can't see it anymore gives the illusion of having been picked up but this actually destroys it gets it out of the scene the play audio function is handled here it's accessing the audio source audio source one play one shot is play once what's it going to play it's going to play the audio clip picked up metal and it's going to play it at 70 percent volume in that way you can pick up this add it to the metal inventory system change the icon and it will show up in your system as having numbers so that's the inventory system. It's fairly simple and straightforward. It will only hold nine items, but for the purposes of a simple and short game or an assignment game, if you're a student, that's more than enough, I would say, for the things that you need. Now I'm gonna go and talk about the crafting system. So I'm gonna shimmy on over to the crafting station here and take a little look. So this is something I've downloaded and then put panels on here. The crafting station, is just something I've made in Photoshop here using the same texture background as before and just beveling that text so that it stands out. So the workbench has been sunk into the wall. It's got a box collider on it to make it solid. The box collider is this green one here so that it's a solid object I won't pass through it. And then it's got a sphere collider on it that it's using as a trigger. This is essentially so that the script knows when the player is standing in front of it, when it's inside this area here and the player does whatever they want to do, it will allow them to craft whatever it wants to craft. I've then got two more things on it. I've got this crafting script here, which is a script I'm going to go into in a second. You'll notice one of the variables is a sound effect. So because it's got an audio clip, I've also put an audio source on it here. The way I've done that is I've dragged the crafting script onto the object over here. I won't add it twice because it's already on there. And then I've dragged the audio clip, not over to here, directly up to here. And again, I won't put it on there because it's already on. I've made sure to de-check play on awake so it doesn't play as soon as I load the game because I want to control how it plays with the script. So let's take a look at this crafting script. So you see, I've only got two variables on this thing. I've got an audio source because it needs to play sound and I've got an audio clip, which is the particular sound it's going to play. And this creates the variable here, crafted, which I can then drag that clip into. At the start of the game at Void Awake, uh, it's going to go and find the audio source. Which audio source? This one the one that's on the script here, the one that's on the same object as the script. It's gonna go find the audio source, get components. The heavy lifting is done by this void on trigger stay collider. So the reason I'm using on trigger stay instead of on trigger enter is because I want it to take effect whilst the player is inside it, not just when they enter it. As long as they are inside the collider and they do all of this stuff, then it will do whatever it's told to. So what am I telling it to do? Well, first of all, I've gone void on trigger stay, collider other, so if the other game object has a tag that is exactly equal, double equals, to player, and double ampersand and and, and if the player pushes the key M on the keyboard, M for metal, then it will run a little debug log. That's just a test that the M has worked. I'm going to hash that out and save because you don't really need that. Uh, that's just me testing that it's worked. So if the inventory system script if inventory metal economy is greater than or equal to six, then it will do this stuff. So that's why it's important in inventory system that you make sure you have a public static metal economy because the public static bit, the static bit means other scripts can access it. So back into the crafting, if the player pushes M and they have metal, then the inventory system will add one to the power cell economy. So I'm crafting metal into power cells. It will add it plus equals one. And it will then take that metal away. I will lose six. It will inventory system metal economy minus equals six. So whatever the, whatever that was, it's now lost six. And then it will run the play audio script down here. And play audio quite simply says that the audio source should play one shot, play once, should play the audio clip crafted at 70% volume. And the audio clip crafted here is the one I've created. It's whatever I've dragged into there. So some of the limitations with this system as I've set it up by pushing M, you will only work with the metal economy. So the player would need a different button depending on what they want to craft. Whilst that's slightly cumbersome, again, it is modular, so you can add a bit at a time. And all you would need to do inside the on trigger stay collider is copy this. So for example, copy that, paste it, 
and then change the key code. So this time if I'm pushing P and I've got six power cell economies, then maybe I can convert them into a tool economy and it will remove those six from my power cell economies. So in this way, it becomes quite modular. Yes, you'll need a whole different bunch of buttons to push in order to craft different things, but that could just as easily be number one on the keyboard, number two, number three, number four, or whatever else. There are other ways you could get around this as well, but this is a simple crafting system after all, and this system simply works. I'm gonna take that out because I actually quite like my crafting system the way it was. Thank you very much for watching this short tutorial on survival games and how to make inventory and crafting systems.